Hey guys, let's talk about files in a Linux system in this lecture. In a Linux ecosystem, everything is considered as a file, which means not only your regular files like your text files or images are considered as files, even your directories are considered as files as well. So directories are just some special files that can store other files in them. To understand this, let's have a look at this picture. This is the picture of your directory structure in Linux. It has the root directory at the top and because directory is a special file that has that can store other files in it, root directory can have other files and because directories are also files, these other files could also be directories and they can in turn have other directories creating a whole structure of directories on your file system. Now the next type of files in a Linux ecosystem are special files and these are called special files because they perform some special functions. The first type of a special file is a block file. A block file provides buffered access to your system hardware components which means they provide a method of communication with the device drivers for your hardware resources through the file system. So they allow your system to talk to your hardware resources through the file system using files. An important aspect of block files is because they are buffered access type files, they can transfer a large block of information at any given time. Now to search for all the buffered files in your system all you've got to do is open up your terminal type in ls minus l so ls is list minus l provides the list in a long format and we do that on slash dev which is your device directory and then we do this now we'll talk about pipes and grep commands in Linux a bit later but for now just understand this a pipe will take the output of this command and give it as input to this command and so what we do here we list all the files in slash dev directory and then we search for that list for file names that start with B so this caret is wildcard for starts with and we hit enter so we've got a list of all the directories we've got our loops from loop 0 through loop 24 we've got the SDS which are our device files sorry disk files and we've got SR0 which is our CD-ROM so SDA is disk file and CD-ROM is SR0 now the second type of file that we need to talk about is a character file a character file is also a device file but it provides unbuffered serial access to your system hardware components so just to repeat that character files provide unbuffered serial access whereas block files provided buffered access so what's the difference in unbuffered serial access we can only transfer data one character at a time in block files we could have transferred a lot of data at any given time but in character files we can only transfer one character at a time now to search for these character files all we've got to do is hit the up arrow and then replace B with a C in our command and we've got all our character files so on the left hand side you see the C here highlighted in red these are all character files so we've got our TTY terminals here we've got user input etc as a character file now let's talk about symbolic links next symbolic links are nothing but references to other files on the file system which means symbolic link files are just some files that point to other file now to have a list of symbolic links all we gotta do is hit the up arrow and replace C with an L 
and it will give us all the symbolic links in our device directory so as you can see we've got our cd-rom which is sr0 our core which is slash proc slash k core now standard error is slash proc slash self slash fd slash 2 so processor on self and 2 just remember this number we'll use these numbers extensively when we do the um, video on scripting standard error is the when you run a command and if that command has an error so it results in an error that error is returned to standard error standard out is the output of that command so for example the output of this command was printed on standard error which means oh, sorry standard out which means standard out is this right so standard out is slash proc slash self slash fd slash one and error is two now we can also create our symbolic links so to do that let's do this touch file.txt what touch does is touch creates an empty file so we've got our empty file here now let's point this file to something else so let's go ln ln creates a link minus s makes that link symbolic now to get help on ln you can type in man ln and hit enter and you can see ln make links between files that's the usage of it ln whatever option you want and then target and because we want to create a symbolic link we use minus s which is a symbolic link we get out of man using q so once in man hit the q button and it'll take you out so we can type in ls ln minus s and we give it the name of our file file.txt because we want to create a symbolic link for this file and then we want to call the link slash home slash labit slash my linked file.txt right and if i hit enter it will create the symbolic link now to list this symbolic link we go hit the up arrow until we get to the command that we used here now we'll modify this command by changing the directory to the directory i created my symbolic link in which is my home directory so i'll type in home slash labit and i will hit enter and as you can see my linked file.txt is file.txt now to demonstrate this i'll go file.txt i'll explain what vi does is but vi is basically just a text editor hit enter we'll talk about text editors in a later lecture but i'll say for now i'll say this is a test file that i have created to show symbolic links and i can do a cat on this file right and then if i do a cat on slash home slash library slash my link file hit enter you can see i edited file.txt with this line but when i try to read this file my linked file it also shows this line this is because my link file.txt is referencing file.txt so how, i hope you uh, understood the concept of a symbolic link now the next type of special file is a piped or a named pipe 
Now we've seen the usage of pipe when we did this to transfer the output of this as an input to this. So basically pipe allows inter-process communication by connecting the output of one process to the input of another. So we've seen the usage of pipe. Now we can also list all the pipes in a Linux system by typing in ls minus l and we can grab on caret p. So we can see we, I've got one pipe here. You can create a pipe using mkfifo and give the pipe a name. Right? And you can pass some data onto the pipe using echo Don't worry if you've not understood the command. I'll be explaining these commands later. So this is for now. I'm just um, doing this to show you the usage of pipe. Now, the next type of files I want to talk about are socket files. Socket files are files that provide a means of inter-process communication but they transfer the data between processes running on different environments or different machines. So the difference between pipe and a socket file is that pipe allows inter-process communication between processes running on the same environment and socket files do it on processes running on different environments. Now you can have a look at all the socket files on your system by typing in ls minus l grep and then caret s. So I don't have any um, socket files for now. But an example of a socket file would be when you open up your web browser and go to any um, web server. So for example, if I go to yahoo.com or google.com what essentially I've done is my system communicates to this um, web server using socket and they are generally used by um, programmers so this brings us to the end of this lecture I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next lecture bye